Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Generative Geek. My name is Vaibhav and in today's video I'm starting a new series on RAGs. RAG is a very hot topic in generative AI these days and what RAG stands for is retrieval augmented generation. Now RAG is basically a process where you know large language models get trained on tons of data right and they have billions of parameters on which they get trained now but but there it's not like an online learning process it's an offline learning process where the model is trained on certain data and that for that you would have seen a lot of models have a cut off date now that mod, that knowledge on which these models get trained become the reference point for these models right now let's say you are a corporate and a lot of your uh, information is in is in your contracts is in your uh, documents is maybe in your um, zen desk or fresh desk or one of those uh, support uh, systems or in your salesforce and you want basically uh, you want to build something uh, maybe a chatbot or a question answering uh, tool or maybe an agent that can reference this knowledge as well and then use the ultimate knowledge that is available with llms to give you the best possible answer right so so it's like you what what are you augmenting you are augmenting the knowledge on which the model is trained with your own data right so that's why it's called augmented generation and it's retrieval because it's trying to it's going to retrieve your knowledge add it to the prompt and send it to the llm for an answer right so that is called a retrieval augmented generation now in this video and the series of videos that we will be i'll be covering my goal is to build a full fledged rag uh, where we will take a few types of documents we will ingest those documents then we will you know and i i have a graphic available on the screen let's just say you have uh, you have an information store where you have various types of um, documents pdfs sql maybe something is there in your database maybe there are ppts there are some movie files there are mp3s like you know pdf sketches codes right you know you can use entire of it and load it so the first step is you will load this data and then once it's loaded you will split and chunk it now why will you do a split and chunk largely you will do a split and chunk because most of these llms have finite context which they can hold so that's called the token length right you know so google pro gemini 1.5 is has a million token length so maybe you can store a lot of this stuff right in one go you can send a lot of that stuff in one prompt but but for most of the models that's not the case a lot of models have 8000 token limit 16000 32000 maybe 128000 but but that's basically the limit right even if it even with 1 million you even if you could like you know send several books you still will have to choose if you had to put several plus one right you know hey what should i actually send to the prompt right i can't send uh, several plus one the model only accepts several right let's say if several was let's say 100 right so i hope you get the point so what you do is in that case you want to you want to split the text up you want to split the documents up into chunks and those chunks can then are then use we use some sort of an embedding function and i've covered embedding in detail in my previous videos you use some sort of an embedding function like maybe an open ai embedding function olama has has its own embedding function a lot of embedding functions are available so let's say whatever embedding function you use embedding function converts this text into a vector right so that's the job of an embedding function and the vectors are created in a way such that semantically similar text or semantically similar words or context will appear closer to each other right so uh, so that's what that's what the vector representation looks like you know and and it's a very dense vector space so think of it not like a two dimensional space 
but a space which has several dimensions, right? And once that is done, you go out and you store this in a vector database, right? So you you store the vector representation in a vector database like a Chroma DB, Pine Cone, Elasticsearch. For our production systems, we we are using Elasticsearch because we were very comfortable with Elasticsearch, and maybe in a future video I'll cover that. But uh, yeah, but you can use Chroma DB or Pine Cone, one of that, right? You know, for this for this tutorial, we'll probably be using uh, Chroma DB, and I'll try to see if we can use Fice, which is uh, from Facebook, and uh, Pine Cone. Uh, but Chroma DB for sure because I already have that covered as part of other other playlist, right? You know, so have a look at that as well. And then once your data is stored, the next step is that, hey, there is a text, there's a query that the user or an agent is trying to make, right? You know, the, it's, and then that query is converted into using the embedding function into a vector. That vector then goes out and finds from the vector DB, it will find out what are the nearest neighbors. Once you find those, so these become like the nearest candidates for the query's result, you take those and you do some sort of a post-processing. Now your post-processing could be that, you know, you want to convert it into a JSON. Your post-processing could be that you want to convert, you want to only pick one neighbor or it could be anything, right? You know, it depends on the domain that you are part of. But once those embeddings are converted back to text, you add it to the prompt and you then send it to the LLM, right? Now, whatever your LLM is, the LLM will give you some answer and that becomes the answer which you then send back as a response to the user. So what you did is instead of just the user typing a query, you could have done this, that hey, the user taught, typed a query, you could have just formed it as part of the prompt. That is not what you are doing. You are saying, hey, you know what? This is not what I'm doing. I'm going to send this entire loop where the user's query is going to get converted into embedding function, into a vector, into a multidimensional vector space because you're trying to find from your, and this is where your, your company's knowledge or your own knowledge, your information, your contracts, your PDFs, your MP3, your code is stored, right? So, so this is where it goes out and searches and finds the best candidates and those best candidates are then converted back into text add it to the prompt and then you have a more meaningful prompt with a better context. Now the LLM has more grounding and it can give even better answer basis the situation. So just to give you some example, it could be that, hey, you know what, you, you, you take your Facebook ad campaigns data, you pick whatever is relevant and then you send it as part of the prompt out to the model, out to the LLM asking what should be the best next step basis the data that you have presented or basis some history basis what you want or whatever right or whatever error you are getting anything it could be so so this is what this is how an rag system in general theoretically works uh, in the next video what we'll do is we'll start with coding the first parts we'll first load take some documents we'll load them we'll start splitting them into chunks and then convert it into an embedding function using an embedding function into a vector and store it in a database. So this will be part of the next video that I'll be doing. Uh, today's goal was just to give you a sense of, this video's goal was largely to just give you a sense of how RAG systems work, right? What is the theory behind the RAG system, right? I hope this was useful. Uh, meet you soon in the next video. Thank you.